Good morning, Nina. It is Thursday, September 1st. Thank you for joining us for our very quick 30 minutes. Welcome to our college football kickoff show. Uh, it's that time of year. It's September. High school football, college football. It's an exciting time. I appreciate you joining us. Grab a cup of coffee. I'm Steve Keim, and I have a special co-host today. Good morning. Thank you. And I'm Andy Holland. Good morning. Rise and shine and go Pokes. Good morning, and again, thank you for joining us on this Thursday, September 1. And let's say uh, it's our college football show. And where did the go pokes come from, Andy? That wasn't on the script. Sometimes you just that's, have to that's, improvise. That's you OSU people just doing what you want to do when you want to do it. Just no rules, no boundaries <laughs> or whatever. So I appreciate Andy joining us today. Andy, what's your official title? I think it's about this long over across the street here, but what's the, the official title that you have at you? Director of the Cherokee Strip Regional Heritage Center. Okay, I told you it was a long title, but we appreciate you joining us to show number 85. And in 12 words or less, Andy, what do you do? Well, we run a really great history museum that tells the story of Northwest Oklahoma. And the exciting thing about it is that when you come in the east, eastern part of the city, you get to see that right off the bat. You know, it's not like it's buried somewhere and you got to go here and there. Right. It's just right there on 412. Well, thank you for joining us today. Well, I woke up around 5.30 this morning at the farm and looked out the window, and it was kind of quiet like it usually is. And then all of a sudden I heard something around 6 o'clock, and I go, what? what's, what's that? It was pouring down rain at the farm. So we had rain in 71 degrees and uh, statewide temps, in case you're traveling across the state today, uh, will look like this. If you go over to Prue, Prue's on Route 66, by the way, for you history buffs, 72. But you can see where we're at. Of course, Gage is a little bit cooler than everybody else. Antioch, I have not been to Antioch. Have you, Andy? I have been? not. Okay. Well, we do a little history lesson every Thursday morning with our statewide temps. So if you're planning to uh, drive across the state, and I think we may have the radar to be able to bring up, the western part of the state was really getting a pretty good, uh, there you go. So you can kind of see throughout the central part of the state, and especially northwest where we need the water, the good rain is coming down. So thank you for putting the radar up. But right now here we have rain in 71 degrees on our college football kickoff show. Okay, Andy, for the three-day forecast, you got any big weekend plans? Or just you know, resting up for a busy month? We do have a busy month, but it is going to be a great weekend. I hope you all will get out and enjoy it. The last of the summer temps, so... A great weekend for college football. Yep, very, mu very much so. And speaking of football, Friday Night Lights, Penn Klein. Oh, by the way, have I mentioned today, September 1st, is Penn Klein's birthday? Mm -hmm. So when you see Penn, wish him happy, happy 66th birthday. birthday today. I think that's what he is. There he goes. <laughs> anyway, September 1 is Penn's day all day today. So for Friday Night Lights, Penn's put together a little graphic for us. Look at all the ball games. A lot of the seasons or a lot of the schools kicked off last uh, last Friday night, and boy, they're in full full engagement. Ponca City at Enid, that's uh, Enid, the Plainsman, will have their home opener on uh, Friday evening. Then you go all the way down to my school of the Perry Maroons, and that's our big rivalry game. I don't know if it still is, because that's the Perry Maroons versus the Blackwell Maroons. And everybody says, what's a maroon? Well, that's, a, that's another story for another show. But, Penn, thank you for putting all that up. That's Friday Night Lights and a pretty exciting time. 
It's 7.35 and it's time for the Oklahoma Minute. We've got the bow tie guy, Derek Silas, to fill us in on news that happened overnight. According to the Transportation Security Administration, federal agents are finding a spike in loaded guns and carry-on bags at Oklahoma City Will Rogers Airport. In Oklahoma State Capitol News, a group supporting a state question to allow medicinal use of marijuana in Oklahoma rallied at the state capitol Tuesday. In local news, Enid Young Professionals recognized award recipients at the fifth annual 10 Under 40 Tuesday at the Central National Bank Center here in Enid. And Senator Inhofe visited the ETN studios for an interview and also met with leadership within the Enid community yesterday. Watch for that interview on Channel 12 and 112 within the next few weeks. In sports this Saturday, OU will play Houston at 11 a.m. in Houston. It'll be a pack house for OU's opener for the season. The NRG Stadium has a capacity of 72,220 seats and sold out a couple of weeks ago. OSU will play Southeastern Louisiana at 2.30 p.m. in Stillwater, and TU will play San Jose at 6 p.m. in Tulsa. And on this day in history, in 1894, the town of Hickney, Minnesota, is destroyed by a forest fire. A total of 440 people died in the area. And in 1864, Union Army General William Tecumseh Sherman lays siege to Atlanta, Georgia, a critical Confederate hub, shelling civilians and cutting off supply lines. In 1972, Bobby Fischer becomes the first American to win the World's Chess Championship. And in 1985, 73 years after it sunk, a joint U.S.-French expedition locates the wreck of the RMS Titanic. It was about 400 miles east of Newfoundland in the North Atlantic. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Back to you, Steve and Andy. Well, when, whenever Derek does these day in history things, it just the flashback of all these dates and all these events. It's just amazing, especially the Titanic deal, 1985. 85 doesn't really seem that long ago, but then when you start doing the math, it goes, whoa, it, it was you quite... You start looking in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, you start looking in the mirror and math. You said that. But I agree with you wholeheartedly. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this Thursday, September 1st. Uh, good morning, Nina. High today is supposed to be around 82, and again, besides the current showers, throughout the day, there's going to be a 50-50 chance of rain, so keep that in mind. I'd like to remind you, if you have any birthdays or special events uh, that's taken place, we know that we have a lot of folks watching us from the Commons, uh, Greenbrier. Uh, there's a couple other places that I'm forgetting right now. They send us birthday announcements. We can put those on uh, the air for you, but send that information to GME. You can see right there our Holsteins checking the mailbox, gme at ena.org. If you have any event, grandson, grandkids, whatever, uh, if you'd like to celebrate uh, an event, send it to that email address. And um, somebody give me the play-by-play -play of what this picture is. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> That's my beauty. That's your beauty. Give us a little bit more information here, Andrew. She was a rescue horse. Okay. I rescued her from a kill pen, and she oh was my. in bad shape when I brought her home, and she is my love. Yeah, very good. What's her name? Beauty. Beauty. Okay, that's your beauty. How about that? Mm -hmm. So, GME at Enid.org is where we need to go. Okay, it's 738. What's next? Brooke is back. Welcome, Brooke. Good morning, Enid. Thank you for having me back this morning. We have a lot going on this month at the Central National Bank Center. First, this Friday, tomorrow, we'll have Ted Nugent at 7.30 p.m. and tickets are still available if you would like tickets to see Ted Nugent. And then, something that we're going to be um, collaborating sort of with Main Street Enid for First Friday, which is actually the second Friday on September 9th. We will have Jake Bowers on our plaza just out front of 
um, con the convention hall building with um, somewhere where you can get beverages and you can just listen to some live music and have some fun. So be sure to stop by if you're out for First Friday this month. And then we'll have Three Dog Night. That's going to be Thursday, September 29th at 7.30. Excited to have Three Dog Night here in Enid for the second time. And then listen in. We will have some announcements or at least one this month. So be sure to join in um, on the radio stations and look um, on our Facebook page for more information about upcoming events. And then the most special one, we do have Penn's birthday, so we'd like to wish him another happy birthday today. Thank you, and back to you, Andy and Steve. All day today is Penn's birthday, <laughs> all day. Real quick, I understand we have three, there's probably more, but we've got three important dates, Andy, uh, in September, yes. and regarding your world, and what yes, are those September events? September 9th, 16th, and 29th. Okay. We're going to spend a little bit more time throughout the, the morning talking a little bit about those, but the 9th, 16th, and... 29th. Okay, circle those dates on your calendar, and we'll talk a little bit more specifically, and we appreciate Penn putting those graphics up there letting us know. Okay, well, the cell tax uh, passed in regard to the Call Lake uh, Pipeline Project, and you've been asking, well, what's next? Well, it's time to find out, and it's time for One-on-One -on -one with Jamara. Welcome to One on One with Jamara. Our special guest this morning is Christopher Gadansky. He's the Director of Engineering Services for the City of Enid, and he's here to talk about the Call Lake Project. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here with us. Anytime. <laughs> now, for those that may not be familiar with the Call Lake Project, say they're new to town, uh, maybe new to Van Air Force Base, what is a colleague project? Well, the purpose of the project is to provide us with an alternate water supply to mix with our well fields. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, Enid is one of the largest municipalities that is dependent on well water. And what we want to do is provide some sustainability and long-term future. Um, what we'll design and construct an intake over at the lake. We'll bury a piece of pipe from there to here. Uh, as surface water requires more treatment than well water, We'll build a water treatment plant, and then we'll integrate the waters together and mix them, and then integrate that with our current uh, piping system in the city. So that's, that's a very intense project. Mm -hmm. Now, um, last week we had elections to vote on proceeding with the project or not, and now that the, the project or the, the colleague uh, was voted yes by the citizens of Enid, <coughs> What happens next? Okay. Um, yes, they did vote and approve the, uh, the sales tax to fund the project. Mm -hmm. And it really reflects really well on the residents of Enid. It, it shows that, that they're very savvy. They understand what's important. And they have a vision for this town. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, really, it's really exciting to know that, that that's the way they've approached this. Um, it also means that we now have to be very diligent and very transparent and, and honest with them and, and keep all that information flowing so they'll know how we're doing on it. Uh, the next step of the project is to uh, complete the design up to 30%, mm -hmm. start the environmental uh, research on the, on the route that we're going to use, the location of the intake and the, and the uh, water treatment plant, mm -hmm. and begin doing the, what we call geotechnical or studies of, of the ground and the subsoils as, mm -hmm. across those spots. Okay. Now, um, you mentioned 30%. So basically what we had was a base, uh, a base design or a base idea. Mm -hmm. Like you yes. mentioned, we were just, uh, we we're going to bring water from Call Lake into any. Correct. We had mm -hmm. a 10% conceptual design. Mm -hmm. uh, the next step is to take that to 30%. Okay. And now for, for those that may be um, asking, how long will this process take? Well, actually, it will seem like a long time as you're watching it. For mm -hmm. those of us who are having to do it, it will go by real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, the next phase will be somewhere between 12 and 15 months. Uh, from there, 
we'll get, uh, get a really good idea on how our environmentals are doing, uh, make sure our route is approved, deal, sign our contract with the storage contract with the Corps of Engineers, and then we'll proceed, and that'll take about 15 months, 12 to 15, then another 12 months for uh, take those designs to 100% and get all our permits, mm -hmm. and then probably two to three years to construct. Okay, and uh, will there be any meetings for the public to attend so that they, they are involved in the process or they know what's going on? We haven't exactly scheduled public meetings, mm -hmm. um, but we will present status to the city commission okay. on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and the public is always welcome to attend those. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, the citizens can access the call -A project information on the City of Enid's website. Um, at eni.org slash call a project and all the information is there um, in more detail mm -hmm. and also who to contact if they have any questions. Yes. Now uh, for the project, this project of this magnitude like you mentioned, uh, for the citizens to vote yes, mm -hmm. um, that means that the word got out and everybody understands the importance of water yes. for the community. Yes. Water is really the future of our community here, and then it's without it, there's going to be a real challenge to grow and, and to prosper. And now the city is running with uh, wells. Yes, it is. Right. Um, now some of those are they dry, or is it that they're not going to have enough capacity within the, the coming <coughs> years? Well, you know, what we've found over the years is that the level to the water where our, our well fields are at continues to drop. Mm -hmm. um, and as, as time has gone by, we've had other users want to use uh, the water that's in the aquifer. We don't own that water. We only have a right to a small portion of it. Mm -hmm. And so the agricultural and the, and the um, oil and gas folks also need that water as well. So it just, it's just prudent on our part to bring additional water and to diversify our water portfolio. Okay. So, uh, in summary, our citizens can expect that within the next two years? Pretty close. Yeah. Or, or so, we're going to see some pipe on the ground, right? <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be in two and a half to three years, yes, you'll start to see pipe going into the ground and construction okay. at uh, the water treatment plant. Okay. Well, um, then again, if we can see that slide with the information, if you can find, uh, if you want to find out more information on the Colleague Project, you can visit the City of Enid's website, um, enid.org slash Colleague Project. Well, Mr. Gadansky, thank you for joining us this morning. Do you want to add anything else before we go back to Steve and Andy? I think it's just an exciting project. It'll be really great to do, um, and I think it will really set Enid on, on a path for 50 years worth of water. Wonderful. Well, thank you again thank uh, you for much. joining us. Uh, now September is packed with a lot of events at the Heritage Center, and Andy is going to tell us more about that. So let's go back to Andy and Steve. Thank you for watching One on One with Jamara. Good morning, Enid, here on this Thursday, September 1. We appreciate Chris stopping by to give us an update because Often, Andy, people said, okay, it's, it's been passed, and what's next? And so right. we have a little insight into what's next. Sounds As she great. mentioned, uh, September, uh, busy month. It is. All months can be busy, but September especially. You kind of gave us a little insight into some specific dates of mm -hmm. some things. We have time to talk about three of those. Kind of give us a play-by-play -play of those, if you would. Well, it is our busy season of the year. It's when we really shine at the Heritage Center. September 9th is our gala, and we're having it at our house this year in Humphrey Heritage Village on September 9th. And then September the 16th is our lantern tours. We've done this for, for several years. It's our way to celebrate the Cherokee Strip Run. And this year, uh, we will be celebrating or talking about politics, gambling, and alcohol. So it should be a really fun <laughs> night. Okay. Uh, and tickets are on sale now, September like 16th. Or something, you know? okay. <laughs> it's always a sellout, so get your tickets. And then September the 29th, uh, we welcome the top ace from the Vietnam War to Enid, uh, Chuck DeBellevue. He is um, going to come and share with him about his time as a young pilot flying many and, combat missions and Chuck in lives Vietnam. Where now? He is in Oklahoma City now. Okay, okay, so he's close by. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And again, that date is the 29th. Let's go back to the first event on uh, September 9th. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of people locally, they're very familiar with it, but we have an audience because we live stream this. This is on the internet and we have people all around the globe that watch the show. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about the Down Home Gala, you know, tickets and just for people who may not be familiar, how can they help? Well, um, we, we typically have a, a really large gala every year and this year we decided that we were going to scale down, have a casual event uh, in beautiful Humphrey Heritage Village. Uh, tickets are 50 bucks a piece. Okay. And um, we're going to have the Jake Bowers Band there from 8 to 10. And great barbecue and a great night of games. We've got some really fun uh, games of chance for people to okay. participate in. An auction. So we would love for people to come. Well, we've often found out that everybody locally knows everything about it, but we have an audience as well that watches that, hmm, that may be something we need to investigate. So I appreciate that mm -hmm. update. Well, at 7.50, again, if you're planning your day, there's a 50-50 chance of rain later this afternoon, but the high is going to be pretty nice, 82 degrees. Of course, it may be really, really humid. You can see where the rain is coming down across northwest Oklahoma. And, uh, and again, we're holding steady at 71 degrees. Okay, real quick, let's find out what happened overnight in the news. Let's welcome back the bow tie guy, Mr. Derek Silas. According to the Transportation Security Administration, federal agents are finding a spike in loaded guns and carry-on bags at Oklahoma City Will Rogers Airport and a group supporting a state question to allow medicinal use of mar marijuana in Oklahoma rallied at the state capitol Tuesday. Senator Inhofe visited ETN Studios for an interview and also met with leadership within the Enid community. The interview can be seen on Channel 12 and 112 within the next few weeks. And in sports this Saturday, OU will play Houston at 11 a.m. It'll be a packed house for the opener. The NRG Stadium has a capacity of 72,220 seats and sold out a couple weeks ago. OSU will play southeastern Louisiana at 2.30 p.m. in Stillwater. And TU will play San Jose at 6 p.m. in Tulsa. And on this day in history, the town of Hickney, Minnesota is destroyed by a forest fire. A total of 440 people died in the area. In 1864, Union Army General Sherman lays siege to Atlanta, Georgia, a critical Confederate hub shelling civilians and cutting off supply lines. And in 1972, Bobby Fischer becomes the first American to win the world's chess championship. And in 1985, 73 years after it sunk, a joint U.S.-French expedition locates the wreck of the Titanic. It was about 400 miles east of Newfoundland in the North Atlantic. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Back to you, Steve and Andy. Thank you, Derek. It's 7.52, and again, we appreciate you being with us on our college football kickoff show here on this Thursday, September 1. Well, if your schedule allows, at 8 o'clock this morning, we have a great City Connection show. Derek had the opportunity to uh, interview a young man named Duran Lewis. Duran does some great drawings, quite an artist, and uh, so you can join us at 8 o'clock this morning for that show. And Duran shows some of his artwork, and Derek again had the opportunity to uh, visit with Duran. That's at eight o'clock this morning. So, if you got big plans for the weekend, Andy's got the three-day forecast for us, and it looks not too bad. It is going to be a sweet weekend. I hope y'all will mm. get outside and enjoy those 80s and nice cooler weather. Do something. Plant your fall garden. Go buy some mums. Do something. Go root for the Sooners. Or the Cowboys. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I tried. <laughs> I tried. Yeah. Well, food, food is always, I'm always looking for my next meal. You don't know how much effort it takes to keep this weight up. And so speaking of food, mm -hmm. kids are going to school today? They are going to school today, but they won't be in school tomorrow. Yeah. So, so the lunches for today, chicken legs, mixed veggies, mm -hmm. baked okra, mm -hmm. hot <laughs> rolls, diced pears, and milk. And then tomorrow... They get to do whatever they want. Yeah. Chicken legs. Oh, wow. It's just, just the way that's presented doesn't <laughs> sound too good to me. I don't know. I'm sure it's better than it sounds. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Okay, we need to go back to Brooke because I tell you what, uh, you don't have to go to Tulsa and Oklahoma City or Dallas or Wichita or whatever anymore. I mean, everybody's coming to see us, mm -hmm. and it's exciting to see what uh, the events that are coming our way. And so here's Brooke is back once again to give us the update on the latest. 
Thanks for having me back this morning. Glad to be with you. To kick off Labor Day weekend, we have Ted Nugent tomorrow night at 7.30. Tickets are still available, so be sure to get your tickets if you're wanting to start off your weekend with the Ted Nugent concert. And then the next Friday, if you're looking for somewhere to go before you go to the hometown gala, stop by the plaza for first Friday, which is next weekend. Um, and that's in connection with Main Street Enid. And then we'll have Three Dog Night on September 29th at 7.30 p.m. So we do have tickets available for that as well. Keep listening because we do have announcements coming up this month for more events that'll be happening this fall. Thank you and happy birthday again to Penn and back to you, Andy and Steve. Penn is getting all this attention. Yes, sure I is. guess when you reach the age 66, you know, you, <laughs> you, you deserve all the attention that you can get. One of these days, Penn, I'll get there. One of these days. So anyway, no, we wish Penn the best. He does a great job behind us and he keeps us hopping mm -hmm. and making sure we're right on track. Well. September 1, where did the first eight months go, Andy? I have no idea. Do you find the calendar rolls a little quicker each year? Or is I it sure just do. me? <laughs> I sure do. Oh. Tell us a little bit more about your, your rescue horse, Beauty. Tell us, I mean, where, where does that come from? Is it just in your heart to say, you know, I have a heart for horses and... Uh... Well, I have loved horses since I was old enough to talk. Okay. And asked for one every birthday and every Christmas <laughs> okay. and couldn't yeah. understand why we couldn't yeah. put it in the yeah. backyard. And uh, so that dream came true at the age of 41. Got okay. my first horse, and I've, I've been in rescue pretty much since then. Very good. Yeah. Well, it needs to be done, and uh, we, we appreciate your efforts to do so, because if it's just one, it makes all the difference, right? It sure does, just for that one. one. Well, here we are at September 1. We're moments away from Labor Day holiday, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, with that in mind, next Monday, the city offices will be closed. We have a few things to show you here this morning. And uh, the city administration offices, again, will be closed in observance, again, of Labor Day, which is coming up next Monday. However, I know Chris Kodansky's a big golfer. He'll probably be on the golf course somewhere. I don't know if it's Meadow Lake, but he'll be hitting the ball. And uh, Meadow Lake will be open here in Enid if so you want to play golf on Monday. Of course, it's open on Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, and all the other days as well. Trash, you know, for Labor Day, Andy, don't set your trash out on Monday. It's not going to be picked up till Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But however, if you need to clean your yard, landfill's open. And that's so. <laughs> good, because it'll be a good weekend to do that. It'll be a good weekend to do that. And so you can go to our website, ena.org, and you will find out these listings. We kind of went through them really quick. But if you go to our website, you'll see all our press releases and all that. It's 7.57. Welcome to our college football show. Speaking of rescue, mm -hmm. let's show our pet promo, because you can help out adopt a pet. And our phone number is 580-249-4910. And that magic number is 249-4910. You can help us out. Andy Holland, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And uh, you do this again? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, well, it was fun. Very good. Well, we have to go. We want to say again, happy birthday to Penn, number 66 today. <laughs> uh, you have a special day, Penn, and you have a special day as well. Good morning, Enid. 